Now we're going to talk about kingdom fungi. There are more than 81,000 known species of fungi. All fungi are eukaryotic cells, meaning they have a nucleus. Some are unicellular, such as yeast, but majority of fungi are multicellular. A long time ago, fungi were actually classified in the kingdom plantae, in kingdom plantae. But fungi are not plants. This is because fungi do not have chloroplasts. They don't have green cells. So instead of studying plants, we now have a new kingdom. We have kingdom fungi. And scientists that study fungi are called mycologists. So the study of fungi is called mycology. Something you have maybe learned before, the word symbiosis means a relationship between two organisms. This can be positive or this can be negative. Many fungi have a form of symbiosis called parasitism. Parasitism is a positive-negative relationship. This is where the fungi may feed off of the host. A great example of this is athlete's foot or ringworm. Now, there are some examples of mutualism with fungi where fungi may grow on the roots of plants, helping the plant absorb more water, where both the fungi and the plant benefit. Now, many fungi are called saprophytes. This means they live off the dead. So you would have fungi decomposing dead things or things that are not living, such as maybe a dead tree or dead leaves. But fungi are known as being heterotrophs. They are not like plants where they are autotrophs, but they have to eat or digest other things. Now, fungi are beneficial. Uh, there's many different things in which fungi can be used. Uh, the production of food and uh, beverages, uh, medicine, and other chemicals are actually created from fungal growth. Now, in nature, fungi are great decomposers, just like bacteria. Uh, many times, fungi, when they decompose, they are going to release water and carbon dioxide. Now, fungi have a cell wall, and that is called chitin. chitin. Some terms you need to know for some fungal parts or structures. A single strand of hypha or an individual thread, this is called hyphae or hypha. This is a vegetative body meaning there are no spores, it is not a fruit, it does not contain the reproductive parts. Now many hypha intertwined together is called mycelium. Now some hyphae can have more than one nucleus in it and that would be coenocytic. And you learned that when we talked about protists such as giardia. Now if any hypha have walls that separate the nuclei, this is called septa. And as we said, yeast in baking bread, yeast is unicellular. Okay, here we have an individual spore that creates an individual thread called hypha. And then many hypha intertwined together is called mycelium. So if you ever ripped apart a mushroom, you have many threads of that mushroom that's called mycelia or mycelium. Okay, so on the right-hand side, the top picture up on the right, you do not have any walls. You have many nuclei. Those are not spores. Those are nuclei. So this would be called coanocytic because it has many nuclei in one mass of cytoplasm. The middle picture on the right has these little walls called septa. And you can see in the microscope where it kind of indents. That's where the walls are. And it separates the nuclei. So it would not be coenocytic. The last picture, however, has septa, but it has two nuclei in a mass of cytoplasm. So that, again, would be coenocytic. Now, when mold grows, if it grows, especially black bread mold, if it goes, grows up and out of the bread, the individual hypha or strand is called aerial hypha because it's growing out of the ground, up in the air. 
And on the top of aerial hypha, you usually have a spore sac called a fruiting body or a sporangium. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we have our aerial hyphae growing above and out of the bread. And then at the top, you have your sporangium, which contains all the spores. That's your fruiting body. Remember, fungi do not have seeds. They have spores. The first phylum I want to talk about is phylum zygomycetes. An example of that is black bread mold, or rhizopus. You can see the aerial hyphae. You can see the spores. And the connection between them is called a stolon. Okay, here's the black bread mold. You can see the hyphae, the little fibers, and then the black fruiting body or black sporangium. The next phylum is Basidiomycetes. A great example of this is mushrooms. Now, not only mushrooms are in this phylum, but puffballs, rust, and smut. These are club-like fungi. Now, the basic overall diagram and structural components of a mushroom you will need to know, such as the cap, the gills, the spores, the stipe, also known as the stalk, will be very important for you to know. Here you can see the mushrooms, puffballs, smut, and rust. Now, the rust is a fungus. This is not the same rust in which you have oxidation of metal. Okay, it looks like that same color when rust happens, that's why they call it rust. It looks a yellowish red color. And then smut looks like dirt, but it's actually a fungus. That's why they call it smut, because it looks like dirt. Okay, the common edible mushroom is called a gyricus. This is your pizza mushroom. Inside that mushroom, you have these little club structures that hold the spores, and that's why they're called basidiomycetes, because of these little clubs in the reproductive parts. So fungi are classified by their reproductive structures. Three genus species scientific names that you need to know are Amanita caesara, Amanita muscaria, and Amanita phylloides. This is identified by different character traits. Amanita caesara is an edible mushroom. Amanita muscaria causes hallucinations. And Amanita phylloides is called the death angel. It causes death. Which is crazy that all three of these are in the same genus, which is very specific. But then when you get more specific, looking at each species, it has a completely different character trait causing death or hallucinations or being completely fine and edible. Here's Amanita caesara. Here's Muscaria. This looks like the Mario mushroom. This causes hallucinations. And this looks like a normal mushroom, but this is Amanita phylloides called the death angel. It is deadly. The last phylum we're going to talk about is, Am is phylum Ascomycetes. If you rearrange the first three letters in Ascomycetes, A-S-C, we get sac. This is a sac-like fungi. Examples of this is yeast, penicillin, which, causes, which is made into the antibiotic penicillin to fight bacteria, morals, and truffles. Now, when I say truffle, I'm not talking about the chocolate. And then ringworm. Ringworm causes athlete's foot. So... Interdigital ringworm would be athlete's foot. Here's yeast, which is unicellular, and it's actually going through an uneven sexual, it's actually going through an uneven asexual reproduction called budding. You can see the little buds coming off of it. This is asexual reproduction. Now, binary fission is an even, one to two. This, however, is an uneven division or asexual reproduction. You can also see the penicillin, which is turned into the antibiotic penicillin. There you can see the morals, which can be a delicacy. Many times they will... And then you have truffles, which is also a delicacy. Now truffles actually grow on the roots of trees, and in Europe they actually use pigs to smell out 
where the truffles were, and then people would dig them out. You can get ringworm or athlete's foot of the face. You can get athlete's foot or ringworm. Uh, this is not a actual worm. This is just a fungus. You can get this anywhere on the body, your arm, between your toes. Okay, this is where spores can be spread, and this usually can happen in very warm areas where fungi can grow, such as hot tubs, uh, locker rooms, uh, public showers, places where sports uh, people may be walking around, where athletes may be walking around. Then we have a type of symbiosis called lichen. This is where fungus and algae will work together. This is a type of mutualism. Algae will use sunlight to make food for the fungi and for itself, while fungi will protect it by creating a thallus or a protective covering, so they both work together. So lichen is an example of mutualism.